Oh boy. I do not know how to go about this without somebody probably thinking that I'm putting someone down and I'm not putting someone down. Okay. So I hope you realize that from the very beginning of this video. So that if you listen to this whole entire video, you don't, you don't think that. I don't know why some of these messages that people get give are kind of contradicting each other. Here you had people on the streets giving a message talking about how if you if you went to court and you were judged in front of a judge for the things that you've done, you would be found guilty. And they say the same thing about standing in front of Christ. Talking about how the good news, and I realize it's good news. I know what the good news is, what Christ did for us. But the thing is, what doesn't make sense about the entire message, if... See, we're hoping that bells and whistles go off when you give a message to someone. See, a lot of these people, like this video I was just listening to, a lot of people that are on the streets that they talk to, I can tell that they have not been to church in a while. I know it. That a lot of these people have not been to church for a while and a lot of times they come off to these people, these individuals on the streets, as if they're trying to save themselves because is their work going to be good enough for Jesus Christ? So they've witnessed that so much that they think that everybody they're going to talk to is going to talk a, a works base message that I could stand in front of Christ and because I was a B minus that Christ would accept me into the kingdom because I did things good for people not everybody out here thinks that way there's a couple of people I know that give this message I mean there's more people out there but not everybody goes at it this way. And I really don't think that it is the correct way of going about it. If you want to know the correct way of going out and street preaching, it's just like this individual right here. There's another individual. I think I just subscribed to him because I want to start watching all of his videos. I mean, spectacular videos. Torch of Christ Ministries. He goes out on the street. He gives people a message of what Christ has done for them and what our sins have done for us. Separate us. God, through Christ, can redeem us. And um, he never preaches works based salvation. Um, but I don't understand how this message is contradicting each other. You know, I mean, not, not, not the two messages. I mean, to go out there and talk about what Christ did for us and where we would be without Jesus Christ and where the judgment would be without Jesus Christ is understandable. Going out and telling people about Christ and getting people to come to Christ is is the same thing. We're hoping bells and whistles go off when people give a message about the gospel, the Bible, Jesus, God, the Holy Spirit. And um, The guy in California that rides a bicycle, that has a poodle on his bicycle, some of y'all know who I'm talking about. 
there is a lot of Calvinists that do not like him and his message. But I'm not going to talk about him. And I think the reason why Calvin, Calvinists do not like him is because at the end of the day, he is still going to tell you that even if you gave your life to Christ, you're still not going to be able to live a sinful life. And I know that. And I know that that's the reason why people do not like him that are Calvinists, that believe in one saved. Now, wretched, on the other hand, does the same type of preaching, but he preaches a once saved, always saved message. So there's more apt to people liking his message than the guy out in California. They both go on the street, give the same message. If you stood in, if you went to court for what you were charged for, that even if you said you were a good person, that judge is probably going to still find you guilty. You know, there's been many a times judges haven't found people guilty, but to stand in front of a holy Christ and a holy God, you're going to be found guilty, correct? Okay, so at the end of the day, you give the God, you give the message of what Christ did for us, for mankind. And then there has to be a message about your sin. Even after you give your life to Christ, because he even professed wretched. I've talked about him in the past. He professes the past, present and future sins. He made a video with a pastor now, I don't understand why Wretched would have this guy on his channel because this guy was a what is it called? A Lordship Salvation. Now, Calvinist and Lordship Salvation they disagree am amongst each other. Lordship salvation is, I don't, I, and see, I'm not even looking at the definition. I'm just going off of what, Jeff, if you thought, what would Lordship salvation be? Lordship salvation would be a message that you would follow the ways of Christ. You would listen to what the Bible says and you would put it into your life. Not everybody that believes in Lordship Salvation believes the same thing. Just like not everybody in the Calvinist crowd believes the same thing. But he had a Lordship Salvationist on his channel, but yet he believes in the Calvinist way. So that contradicts each other right there. Because I know that so many Christians out here want to believe in the gospel and believe a, a simple message with no life change and think they're saved. But wretched in this video with this guy from, that believed in Lordship Salvation, <coughs> <coughs> He was a reformed theologist, and I know he was because of the way he talked. But, and I don't believe in reformed theology at all. And there's reasons why. Maybe I go through it in this video, maybe I don't. But this reformed theologist guy, Lordship Salvation, and wretched, we're both talking about things in the book of First John that would prove if you're a born again person. And 
I've already talked about this a minute ago and I really have got to get myself under control making these videos and not uploading them and 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 making another video and not uploading them and then being behind is messing me up bad but Calvinists want to look at Jesus Christ as he's done everything nothing has to come from your part and that's a lie and um, that's why I know the church is so messed up out here because that's not true and even that even the other side could be possibly wrong. I don't know all the beliefs behind Reformed theology or Lordship salvation, but even their message could be wrong. But he brings up that you're supposed to bear the fruit to prove that you're born again. That makes sense. I don't think that's in 1 John, but that makes sense. Um, I think it's in the book of Matthew or whatever, but it makes sense. There's, and he brings up other things that would prove that there has been a true conversion. That somebody has received the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has changed that individual. But what doesn't make sense out of this whole talking about this message Again, I know that what God has given people that have received the Holy Spirit and has even turned to Him and surrendered their life to Him, those that choose to follow His will and not their will, He delivers people. So, there is no talking about once saved here. There is not talking about past, present, and future sins because if you can if you can be delivered of all your addictions, because most of your addictions and stuff are demon related, and if God can get rid of those out of your life, and that's part of the reason why we weren't right with God in the first place, because some of the things that we were doing, we were going to be separated from Him. Where's the excuse? I just got done listening to a girl earlier saying that we're supposed to strive for perfection. How many times have I said that we're supposed to strive for perfection? And yet when people sit here and talk about how we can't be perfect, they don't even talk about striving for it. It's just that we can't be perfect in the story. But that's not the message. I mean, you can't be holy and be living an unrighteous life and you can't blame it on the blood of Christ either you can't blame the righteousness of Christ because that would be so contradicting that God would change an individual and then blame the blood of Christ as if your sin when you're living in it is because of the blood and the righteousness if God delivers people from this. So, denying of all, I mean, if, uh, if Jesus sits there and denies people for a worker of iniquity and lawlessness, and these are people that he's professing to in the Bible that actually thought they were living a Christian life, I know a lot of people are going to go, well, that's somebody that's trying to work themselves into heaven. That's not necessarily the case. That can be a part of it. But I am telling you this right now. You, you're not going to live like the devil and Christ accept you into the kingdom. And this is where the message of salvation, whether it be lordship, Calvinist, whatever other part of it out here is, you're, I'm telling you, few is going to be what it is, man. 
If everybody believed in God, then that would mean that would mean everybody's going to get there. If all the people out here that called themselves a Christian and all you had to do was believe, then they would all be getting there. But they're not all going to be getting there because there's something that hasn't happened. They haven't followed his word. They have not obeyed his word. They have not surrendered their life. They have not even humbled themselves. I don't need to talk about past, present, and future sin. That makes it sound like I'm saying, go ahead, live a sinful life. You believed? That's all that mattered? Tell me where that's in the Bible. That's a chopped up message of the Bible is what that is. And to sit here and hear a lordship salvationist person, which I don't know why he would be a reformed theologist, because normally reformed theologists are like Calvinist. I mean, John John uh, uh, Piper is a, uh, and MacArthur are reformed theologists. They're the ones that sit here and go, if a person doesn't show that they have been saved, then they've never been saved. But here's the deal. I already know again, and I'm going to bring this up again in case I upload the video that I made earlier today. But you, you judge on the outer appearance. God judges by the heart. The thing about it is you can tell by what a person's doing from the outer appearance, by the things that they're doing, that, they're, that they don't have a changed heart. So even though you're looking and I'm looking at the outer appearance, there's not been no change of heart. And I'm going to tell you this, if you ain't changed, if you haven't turned from your wicked ways, there has not been a change of heart. You got the same heart. You honor God with your lips and your heart's far from you. This is, I mean, I'm telling you right now, what I give is a better message than this wretched guy gives. This wretched guy, I mean, I don't even understand why he would ever give a message the way he does. And the thing about it is, I could, I could just imagine if I sit there and I told him something like I did that day when I, that night when I called the radio station that one night, because here's the deal. If you go around telling people not to strive for perfection, and past, present, and future sins have been taken away, have been forgotten. Let me tell you this right now. Then why would I have to come out of the darkness and into the light? The whole message has been blown up. It's a distorted message. If past, present, and future sins have been taken away, don't talk about the light of Christ. Don't talk about the... The 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 um, the crucified with Christ. Talk about your crucifying this the flesh that you're supposed to do. That is your will. That that is, your will is supposed to match God. So somehow what you read in the Bible is supposed to. It's man. I'm telling you, it's the wrong message, man. That's not denying self. If you're out here thinking about past, present, and future sins, and you're out here living a, an unrepentant life, that is not denying self. That is not dying to self. That is not crucifying the flesh. That is not fighting the temptation. That is not forsaking your ways. And it doesn't make a difference whether there's words from the Old Testament to the New Testament. Again, when you were at church as a child, if any of y'all went to church as a child, I don't know how the church is today, but I'm going to tell you right now, if you wanted a message about a certain topic in the Bible, you went to the Old Testament, you went to the New Testament, you went to the Old Testament, you went to the New Testament, you went, because the Old Testament is still relevant to this day. The only thing that has been done away with is the law if you are under the Holy Spirit. Other than that, there's nothing that's changed about the Old Testament. This is the nature of God. You, God's nature never changed. And if you're going to use this dispensation of grace to think that God changed, where he's not going to sit here and uphold righteousness, because that sounds like to me what, you, what the majority of the church is talking about. Are you telling me God stepped down his standards of righteousness? No, he did not. That message is garbage, man. That's a garbage message. God's standards never dropped. It's going to always going to be the same. 
doesn't make a difference whether you think that you can believe and be saved. If you're out here in sin, you're going to be separated and there's no if, ands, or buts about it. And, you know, yes, I understand that if you're out on the street corner, it's pretty hard to give this whole entire message. Now, this t torch with uh, Christ ministries or whatever, he does give that message. He does give that message. He sure does. But I cannot tell you that you can go out here and live a sinful life and Christ is going to accept you one day being of the darkness and being of the flesh and not being of the light and of the spirit. I'm telling you right now, I would be lying to you and that's exactly what the church is doing. They are lying to you. And if you want to accept the ways of the of the devil, accept, accept the ways of the devil. I'm going to tell you right now, these people are devil hearted, man. I didn't say any, I mean, Richard's got the wrong message. And I'm like I said, I could just imagine if I told him he was wrong. I could just imagine how he would act. I'm telling you, he ain't got the right message and the majority of the church does it. I'm not going to talk about the guy in California and I'm not going talk to talk about Torch of Christ Ministries or whatever. Because I've never, I mean, I'm, I'm telling you, he's got a jam up message. Even he preaches that believe is not simply believing. If you're not an obedient person, you're not doing the will of God. The will of God is the Bible. You can go through the Bible and see the will of God there. But I forgot, conformed people can't witness that. They don't understand it. It's not on their, it's not on their same level. You had to humble yourself in the first place, and you had to hate sin for you to get wisdom and knowledge of understanding so you'd be able to rightly divide and discern what the Bible's even telling you. No wonder why most people chop up the Bible and don't give up the whole message. You receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit changes you. You're not out here fornicating no more as a Christian. And you're not out here making excuses as a Christian, uh, twisting the word of God either. I don't know why somebody would talk about making a video about how somebody could be judged, whether they've got the Holy Spirit. Me sitting here in the book of John, in 1 John, there's a scripture. It's kind of like the, the scriptures in the book of Hebrews or Romans or wherever it's at. There's two scriptures. One saying that if you say you ain't sin or, or whatever, there's two in the book of Romans, Romans or Hebrews. And then there's one in 1 John where it says if you, if you say you're, you don't sin. But here's the deal. Have I sit here and said you won't sin? The thing that I've sit here and said is Christians will not keep on living a sinful life. And it tells you that in the Bible. And if you're living a sinful life, you better check yourself. You better check yourself. Now, who led you to believe you could live a sinful life out, outside the church? You didn't get it from the Bible. Not even Christ being an advocate if you sin. Because he he plainly gave you messages about how important it is not to sin. Be better off plucking your eye, cutting body parts off if you'd wake up and not to hang around with sinners if you wouldn't backslide. But I forgot, that's not a word in the in the Christian uh, thesauruses today or the dictionary. The, the dictionary of Christianity today, I forgot, backslide isn't in there. You know, the... the you got uh, falling away, but that again, that goes back to the somebody trying to keep something to be saved, maybe the law or whatever. But I'm still trying to figure out how could you fall away? What'd you fall away from? You fell from grace? You mean you had the Holy Spirit? You were saved? What do you mean? Where's this church out here saying that you, you could, no matter what you could do, you could never not lose salvation? Oh, that's right. It's talking about the law. You know, here we're, we're, we're talking against the people trying to keep the law. No wonder why we're going to talk against them. What about everybody else when Paul sits there and says that even he could come up short even after giving the message? You're being saved. You've never been saved where you could live the rest of your life the way of the devil and you'd make it into the kingdom. There's no such thing as once saved. There's no, you're being saved. You're being, you're, you're being an overcomer. You're being an overcomer. If you want to say you're an overcomer and you can live the way you want to live for the rest of your life, I, you know what? You got free will. That's what matters. I'm still trying to figure out how somebody could say past, present, and future sins if you're being saved, if you have to go to the end. If you have to wait to go to the end of your life.
It's a messed up message, man. It's a messed up message. I'm telling you right now, there are too many people that have put their their faith and trust in man out here. That's exactly what they've done. And it doesn't make a difference if it's from the Reformation days or if it was from yesterday. Most people have put more faith and trust in what somebody's message they've got from someone. And most of the time, if you'll notice, if you'll notice when somebody's under someone else, why are they under someone else? So they can get the same message that they're, that they're giving. At the end of the day, you're going to tell me that their message was more important than what the word of God. If you wanted to know the answer, you could take it to God and he'd give you the answer. It may take months or years to get it because at the end of the day, you know, he's going to let you do what you want to do. He's going to let you do what you want to do. If you, if you, if you're going to want to go out here and just fall away and get the most horrible message like people are giving. I mean, the, all the fornication in the church, it's an absolute joke. You ought to be laughing. You ought to go get some laughing gas and just laugh away. It's an absolute joke. The adultery, the idolatry. I just got done listening to uh, to someone talking about how when you're in church, how much and, and believe me, I know it can be easy. You know, a person has to set themselves apart. You really do. You have to get to where if you're a man and you look at a woman, you just can't lust for them. You just cannot. You just cannot. I mean, I, I've seen it happen in my life because of the Holy Spirit that it would cease and exist, cease to exist or whatever. That's denying self. Bad thoughts, you put them to an end. That's denying self. All this stuff is denying self when you turn away from the ways of the world. Cannot be a friend of God, a friend of God and a friend of the world. Or how about I say it a little bit different? You can't be a friend of the world and God be your friend. That's right. You want to say it the right way? There you go. It doesn't make a difference whether lordship salvation is the right thing. I mean, I know you're going to have to follow the ways of Christ. If that's what it means, that's what it means. But again, do you, I've already seen how I, I, I really do think the Nazarene church is probably the best church out here. And I've already seen how you could go to a Nazarene church and get a horrible message. So it doesn't make a difference. They got fornicators in their church, church just like seven day Adventists got adulterers in their church. So I don't want to hear about how somebody is so, uh, uh, oh, I'm prideful, yeah, we, we keep the Sabbath, you know, I mean, you know, uh, and that ain't, that's not a salvation issue, never was a salvation issue. I'm going to tell you right now, that's not what God wanted in the first place. God wanted people to be obedient to him, and that's exactly what I got out of Abraham. So it's a message of obedience is, all, is, all, is what that belief was. It's a message of obedience. And he got it out of Abraham. He got it out of David. He got it out of all those people in the Old Testament. That And he got it out of John the Baptist. He got it out of, uh, I mean, I'm telling you. It's why they had the Holy Spirit. It's why they had the Holy Spirit. They had what it took. The Holy Spirit can get you to that point where you're living the life that God wants a person to live. And if you think that that's not a part of the message the Bible gives you by, by di Christ dying on the cross and, and uh, death, burial, and resurrection, and Him, and then giving the Holy Spirit to people at Pentecost, if you don't think that there's a message of crucifying the flesh and denying and dying to self that Paul did, and that's why he was no longer a child of wrath, a child of disobedience, there's a messages all over the Bible that people have just... I mean, you might as well just scribbled out through the Bible because it didn't mean to absolutely squat to people. I don't know what to say. I'll tell you right now, 
I could be considered a chief sinner in my life. And I'm going to tell you right now, so could you. And if you're still a chief sinner, you ain't hearing him knocking, are you? You don't know his voice. No, 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 no. Let's get the story straight. You don't hear his voice. Deny all ungodliness and worldly lust. That's what the that's what the job of the Holy Spirit was going to do with grace so you could live a righteous life and I and I'm still not pushing. I hope people don't think that I'm sitting here pushing that um that you can live a righteous life without Christ. But I'm telling you, if you think that there's a message in the Bible that you can live an unrighteous life and, and, and inherit the kingdom, you're quite mistaken because there's no way you can be holy that way. He, this message about how you can live your life and Christ is his righteousness is going to cover you and you can just do what you want to do and, and, and be of the darkness and be of the flesh isn't going to work, man. It's not going to work. This is not the, this is not the message the Bible is giving. It's not the message. Again, here's Jesus magnifying sin. Magnifying sin that all you had to do is hate someone and you were a murderer. All you had to do is look at someone wrong and you're an adulterer. He magnified it. He didn't. You think you think he got a, you think you're going to get away with it? No one's going to get away with it. I'm not going to get away with unrepentant sin. And you're not either. God hated it in the Old Testament days. How do you think the New Testament days are going to be any different? It's no different. Now, how the shedding of the blood is what's different. It is a once and for all. Is that once and for all in your life? That you can backslide, go apostate and fall away? No, it isn't. That's a shipwreck and a dog going back to its vomit and going back to your former self that it talks about in the Bible. I'm not against wretched at all. I don't know where he got his horrible message, though. I know he didn't get it from the Bible. Like I said, I can tell when people out here, I can really tell when people out here start preaching the same thing. When they do talk about certain things in the like salvation, why everybody always goes back to the same thing. When it talks, if somebody talks about once saved, they always go back to the same thing. Always bring up the same scriptures to, to, to defend once saved. And again, that scripture talking about uh, not being snatched out had nothing to do. Had nothing to do with not being able to lose salvation. It had to do with what somebody could do to you, no matter what they could do, there's nothing that they could do to undo what God's done. But you can undo it. You sure can. There's been plenty of people out here that have given messages of talking about how they turned away from God when they had a relationship with God. You know, your relationship, some people's relationship may not be as much as what the relationship I had once before. But I'm going to tell you right now, it won't work. God gets you on that, on that one path and you turn around and go the other way. It doesn't work.
I really don't. I could I could almost delete all the videos I made. I could start talking about how, again, where is the where is the where is the 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 line of saved and never been saved? They both believe in once saved. They both believe you can't lose salvation. But where is that? Where is the dividing line of a person that's saved and a person that was never saved? Is it six months, a year, five years, 20 years? It isn't baptism. Because if it was baptism, then all you people out here that believe you needed to be baptized to be saved and you would all be saved when you were baptized. But it is kind of strange that people that believe in once saved do believe that you need to, that that's, that it used to be almost a requirement that came out of their mouths about being saved. Not everybody gets baptized by the Holy Spirit when they get saved. Not everybody's going to feel something like I did for five or six hours long of conviction. I, I, am I bragging about it? No. Not when I have sit here and said that, that you could ask God to show you something and I hope that people would witness more than I ever witnessed. Where is the dividing line? I mean, I, it can't be, it can't have nothing to do with somebody saying you don't have to do anything. All these Christians out here are going to say you need to do something. I don't know. It sounds like to me, everybody's preaching works-based salvation at the end of the day. You're going to say you have to believe. I go out on the street. You're going to have to do this, you know, and you're not trying to preach works, but you're going to have to do this. You're going to have to give your life to Christ. Oh, you mean I've already worked myself into heaven. Oh my goodness. I already worked myself into heaven. I had to give my life to Jesus Christ. It's a horrible message, man. You can sit here and talk that about repentance. I already, I already gave everybody the answer on repentance. It doesn't save you. Nothing you can do can save you because Christ already did everything. But to get on that level with Jesus Christ, to be covered under his blood, is going to require you to do things. Be obedient, repentive, you go down the list. Surrendering. How, how about all this message about how if I'm 99% surrendered, that I may not be right with God because I wouldn't have to be 100% surrendered. Does that sound like? How about 80, 80 and 20? Is that good enough? 80% surrendered, 20% not surrendered. Maybe you want to use the word Submitted. But again, most people won't even talk about that anyway. So most people that speak the truth, they'll talk about that. Most people won't. Most people that talk about the truth will talk about obedience. Most people won't. It's a byproduct. It's something that comes after the fact. What does it make a difference? It doesn't make no difference anyway. Is anybody adding to the gospel or, or whatever anybody would want to sit here and call all this? A salvation message? I think what God wants people to hear is when they hear a message, something happens in an individual with good intent. I can see through the ABCs. I can see through all this. I'm a sinner in need of a savior with that intent. I say my ABCs, does that mean you're going to be saved? No. Did you get saved all of a sudden when you said your ABCs? I said it just now. ABC. And at the end of the day, I know you can pray a prayer. And I cannot believe Jerry Tony said this the other day. I said this stuff about a few weeks ago. I said that you could say the sinner's prayer. You better have intent to change in your life. If I told you all you had to do is pray a prayer and you were going to be saved, it wasn't going to work if you weren't going to do anything other than that. But if you have intent to change, you could probably say anything you wanted to to God with the understanding 
and something could happen to an individual. Jerry Tony just got done sitting here saying that you could pray a prayer. But it isn't simply saying a prayer and going on with your life the way like nothing ever happened. It doesn't work. And it doesn't make a difference if the only thing that changed in your mouth was, I believe in Jesus Christ. Is that all it's going to make? Is that the only thing you had to do after you said your ABCs or I'm a sinner in need of a savior? I believe in Jesus Christ. And all of a sudden you're going to be led by the Holy Spirit? No, 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 no. No, 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 no. No. Well, I can guarantee you right now for what you do could happen for you to be saved. I could do something different and be saved. I don't have to say the same words. Uh, there's going to have to be a change or nothing ever happens at all. Um. I really, I'm not joking, people, when I sit here and say that when in 2015, I knew, I knew people were not speaking the truth out here. Do I believe that there is a message in the Bible, even about the gospel, having something to do with the gospel about changing your life? I do. I know through Paul's message, you witness it, whether it's, whether you consider it the gospel or not. Yeah, I think I can delete all my videos and make this one video right here. Where is the dividing line of where all of a sudden Jeff is saved? ABCs? Sinner in need of a savior? I believe. What else? You got baptized? What else? Oh, you mean I'm working myself into heaven? Are you guys telling me I'm working myself into heaven? Yeah. I wasn't wrong when people were always saying that it, repentance was works or don't make it as works. And at the end of the day, I was going, well, if it's something you did, I'm thinking if you believed you were saving yourself also. But I was doing that to be sarcastic. If anybody could see through my message there, that was for sarcasm. Repentance doesn't save you. Obedience doesn't save you. None of it saves you. Without it? Well... Like I said, it can't be past, present, future sins if you're being saved. If you're being saved, it cannot be past, present, future sins. If you ever get the message in the Bible that you're being saved, it cannot be your past, present, future sins. It can only be your past. Again, I have to point this out that I don't understand how this ever got past people, how people ever this got ever got lied to people and anybody ever believed that the law was taken away when Christ said it is finished. When you clearly read in Galatians that the, when you are led by the Holy Spirit, that's what takes you away from the law. And yet you were clearly not led by the Holy Spirit coming into this life. Did I say you? I mean we. Well, that's enough of this video. Like I said, there is so much contradiction out here. It doesn't make sense. Because, like I said, and, and I really do think that this is a jam-up example, man. 
I think this is a jam up example and I'm going to give it again. If me and you have been friends all of our lives, we went to church as a youngster for 30 years. All of a sudden I go out and I start doing things that show evidence of the flesh and the church questions me that I'm doing drugs, getting high, uh, cheating on a spouse if I was married and, and then fornicating after a divorce. And I go out and do all these things and the church questions me on my salvation. Don't you think that if you, if you lived the same life except the life of being in sin, don't you think that they should question your salvation? Where was the point that if I showed a converted life and you showed a converted life, that I showed that I was no longer converted, where would somebody sit here and say, oh, no, you weren't saved either. See, it's not making sense. It's right. You can backslide. You can go apostate and you can turn away from God. Fall away. Straight up. Just like David had the Holy Spirit, same, same outcome could have happened to him if he didn't repent and confess and make it right with God. That's right. God gave the Holy Spirit to those in the book of Isaiah that grieved the Holy Spirit, and God was their enemy. This is not, hello. This is the same type of thing going through the wilderness I'm not so sure it was the same group of people because I'm, you know, I'm sitting here off the top of my mind. I, I did you know, not being a Bible reader, I'm thinking that it doesn't make a difference. You saw the outcome of Sodom and Gomorrah for their wickedness. You saw the outcome for their, the wickedness in the, in the, in the wilderness. You saw the wickedness that I'm sure the disobedience, the unbelief and the, and the, uh, the faithlessness of those that he gave the Holy Spirit to in the book of Isaiah they grieve the Holy Spirit. Now, do you really believe that they can be an enemy of God and God's going to keep them having the Holy Spirit? Nations turn away from God and they tumble. America's about to tumble like a, like a ton of bricks. Can I get a hallelujah out there? What's that little thing that uh, Humpty Dumpty? You can put Humpty Dumpty as America. <laughs> I mean, what, it, it's the truth. <laughs> America's about to fall like you would not imagine. And the rest of the world right along with it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I mean, oh my goodness. Uh, America. Talk about a talk about God bless America, make America great again, and people can't even step out of the darkness and the pride that they've got to recognize the truth. Even in the church, got churchgoers caught up in this garbage themselves. America was never going to be great again with number one, God not being number one. And in most Christians' life, God is at number one. I mean, it's either the flesh or the spirit. It's either the darkness or the light. It's one or the other. It cannot work both. I'm going to make this comment again. If I'm out here living a life of sin, 
then let's not talk about the light. And let's not talk about Jesus Christ under condemnation. And Jesus even pointed out the key of the Holy Spirit. And I know that the, the whole goal of the Holy Spirit is not just conviction, but to give that grace that no one had before. I know I'm not wrong when I sit here and say that no one had God's grace before receiving the Holy Spirit. I mean, I don't mean to bring this up again, but no, we would have never needed Jesus Christ to go to the cross. Since we're saved by grace, not faith. Thank you, everyone out there. You know, it's actually happened a couple of times lately where I've almost said a cuss word and I did. And I knew it wasn't me. You think God doesn't want me to get back with the program? But I guarantee you, if you try to cuss again, it's on you. See if it works. If you ever, if you ever get to where you, where the Holy Spirit helps you not to sin by cuss, I mean by not cussing. See if it, it see if if you tried to cuss again afterwards. If you, if if the Holy Spirit's going to do anything, well, yeah, I'm not daring you. I'm not even asking you. I'm telling you, it don't work. I've done it more than once. What was the whole idea that I that I witnessed it the first time? That I was going to be wrong? That I was going to be wrong for saying a cuss word? Yeah. Okay. That's what I got from it. That's what made sense to me. Well, I cannot believe it. Thank goodness my phone didn't cut off. I ain't even looked over at my phone to see if it was even recording. Surprised I didn't look over and it was cut off. Well, after so many seconds, it would go back to the main screen, so. I don't mean to say this again, but if you think that God doesn't give people benefit of the doubt, then why did God give them benefit of the doubt that he gave those people the Holy Spirit? They grieved the Holy Spirit and God was their enemy. No, I, you know, I don't even know what the outcome of those people were. I'm sure some of y'all know what the outcome of those people were that grieved the Holy Spirit in the book of Isaiah where you talk about filthy rags, but you won't talk about other scriptures in the, in the book of Isaiah. I, I got to throw that in people's face. You're going to talk about the filthy rags. I'm going to talk about other stuff in the book of Isaiah. We don't mind talking about, we don't like hearing other certain scriptures, but you're going to throw certain scriptures in my face. I'm going to throw th certain scriptures in y'all's faces out there in the law, law land world. Yeah, I think I could eliminate all my videos and put this one in there. Oh, I could. I guess I could keep on talking about how the other day when I looked up the, uh, I looked up something about believe and obey. 
And I came back with faith and obedience. I don't know why that was the one, the very first one listed, talking about that two videos ago, if I recall, I brought up something about how something would be on one side of the coin, the other one be the only other. People have talked about this in the past that actually without obedience, there is no faith. I mean, you can find stuff that talks about this. I could go get my phone. It's right here. I mean, it's right here. I saved it, sent it to my Gmail. So it doesn't make a difference what phone I'm looking at. It Go to Gmail and it's going to be there. I sent it. It says me. Where you at, me? Oh, actually, it may be. Nope, there it is. Relationship between faith and obedience. Uh, uh, pull up. I mean, I understand this right here. Consequently, just as a result of one trespass was condemnation for all men, that would be Adam. So as a result of the act of righteousness was justification that brings life for all men. For just as a disobedience of the one man, the many were made sinners. So also through the obedience of the one man, the many will be made righteous. Many. Then say all. Those who obey can enter and enter heaven. With tons of information pouring in every day, many people today tend to see and judge things from a common sense point of view. So they are reluctant to do the something disagreeable to them. Although it is what God said, even among people who claim to believe in God, there are many who insist on their way on their own way and put it over God's word. It is impossible for us to obey God if we if we ourselves live in us. However, if Christ only lives in us, obedience is easy. I'm telling you. Hello. Is the Holy Spirit around? As we have eternal hope, we can joyfully obey God's word. Whoever has my commands and obeys them, he is the, he is the one who loves me. He who loves me will be loved by my father and too will love him and show him myself to him. John 14, 21. Obedient faith is necessary to keep God's commandments fully. With obedience, it is impossible. Without obedience, it is impossible to keep them. Jesus also has also said that only those who do the will of the father will enter into the kingdom. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the, key, into the kingdom of heaven, but only the one that does the will of my Father that's in heaven. Okay. Doing God's will, doing God's will is obedience. Only those who obey God's will. How are you going to know God's will if you're conformed to the world? Hello, world. Hello. Hello, world. World. If you're conformed to the world, how are you going to know the the will of the Father, everyone out there in the world. Hello. Okay. I thought I'd maybe get somebody to answer me. Only those who obey God's will can enter into the kingdom of heaven. No matter how long Sunday and Christmas have, have been observed, if they are disordered doctrines, which are not found in the Bible, we must reject them and keep them. And I don't want to, I don't want to read this. I, I already don't want to read this. I don't need to hear about this. I understand that people out here should not have nothing to do with uh, Christmas and and whatever, all these things. Some people are going to keep on doing what they want.
there's some other there's some other stuff here the results of obedience are are all blessings and the results of disobedience are all curses but see here's the thing if a christian is being disobedient god's going to let him keep on being disobedient remember how good things happen to bad i mean bad bad things happen to good people Look at all the people out here that are not observing God and it's, everything's just going hunky-dory with the fake spirit. The consequences of obedience and disobedience are definitely different. Just as the Bible says, a man reaps what he sows. The Israelites encountered many difficult situations during their journey through the desert. Do you think God led them through the desert? Where there was no food and no water because he had no power? Certainly not. The Bible saw, said, God led you all the way in the desert these 40 years to humble you and to test you in order to know what was in your heart, whether or not you would keep his commands. We too may encounter various different circumstances, blah, 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 just... Just as God tested Abraham's faith, he tests our faith in order to know whether we obey him or not. Well, there you go, Abraham. I know it talks about how you obeyed. Oh, I'm talking to myself out there and everybody. I mean, I'm, I'm, I don't need a mental institution. It is faith and obedience that we must have as the eternal kingdom of God is drawing near. God measured Abraham's faith, Noah's faith, Gideon's faith, Joshua's faith through their obedience, didn't he? We should continue raise our faith quotient through our obedience to God. Thinking of what happened in the past, let us obey God's good teachings fully and receive all blessings from God. And then I saved this one. We'll go to another one. Obey is is the proof of believing. <clears throat> See. Obeying is the proof of believing. John 8.31 through 32 to the Jews who had believed in him Jesus said if you hold to my teaching you are really my disciples then you will know the truth and the truth will, will set you free Jesus said that the test of being a disciple is ongoing obedience but anybody out here even Billy Graham does not talk any difference about a believer versus a disciple they're the same person if you want to consider yourself a, a, a believer, you're going to have to consider yourself a disciple. It is one thing to agree with others in a crowd that the words of Jesus were good and wise. It is quite another thing to change a lifestyle's hab a, a lifetime's habit or adopt a radically different lifestyle. Jesus did not despise he prom wait, 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 wait. Jesus did not despise their embryo belief, nor did he demand that they follow a set of rules. Jesus simply asked them to put his teaching into practice. What, you mean be a doer of the word? What? Okay. He promised that those who did did so would be liberated from their old way of life. You mean how? That's right. I know what grace does. I may not had it. I may have not been living the life for a long time, people. But I saw what I saw what the Holy Spirit can do. And I know that if the Holy Spirit could do it for me, I know the Holy Spirit could do it for anyone else. 
And anybody out here that's already living that lifestyle, boy, I can just imagine. I've met people out here that weren't going around living a sinful life every day and twisting God's words so they can live a sinful life and, and gratify their flesh. It is not enough to hear the words of Jesus and believe that they are true. We can only know their meaning when we put his teaching into practice. That means making different decisions and behaving in a different way because we believe his teaching is true. You mean we have to do something? Man, this person this person didn't know what the heck they were writing, they were writing here. I'm going to have to give them an F on this because it sure sounds like to me I had to make a decision here. Shame on this person. You know, I thought I thought Christ did it all. You mean we actually had to do something? I still got to give this guy an F. Shame on this person. I hope you think that I'm being sarcastic a little bit. We can only know their meaning when we put this teaching into practice. That means making a different decision. To blah, blah, blah. And, we, and then we need to keep on obeying as we do. It is the right to expect that we will be released from the addiction to sin and be free to love and serve our Lord. I'm going to tell you right now, that's exactly how it works. Doesn't mean Satan's still not going to be around the corner for you to stiff, for you to trip over, trip, trip, trip. Come on, it's the whole idea to fight the temptation of sin. That doesn't even make sense. That don't even make sense the least bit. Okay, I, that, I don't understand why you'd have to fight the temptation if we could go out and do whatever we want and God's going to accept us into the kingdom. But I don't understand it, man. Maybe it, I don't know. And then we need to keep on obeying as we do it to keep it and be free. Okay. These verses should be a regular challenge. Every time we read the scriptures, is this the way I think and act? If not, what must, what must I do to show Jesus that I understand and want to please him? Can't please him for the flesh. If you're going to talk about faith, you can't please him for the flesh. And then, am I, am I willing to move from a single act of obedience to a lifetime of transformed living? You mean I have to allow that to happen? I have my free will apart that? I know that. The Holy Spirit is here to help us, but we must be willing to co cooperate with him. Oh my goodness. There we go. Let the truth set you free. What is obedience to faith? I never looked this up the other day. The way of obedience is the way of life because Jesus became the author of eternal life to all who obey him. In other words, there is no salvation, no eternal life without obedience. Death entered in through disobedience. Life and immorality were brought to light through obedience to the faith. The way was opened up for us by obedience of Christ. What do you mean obedience? Again, it still has to be a doer of the word. I'm telling you, it's the only scripture I know. I sit here and, and I, have to, I, I have to rephrase this. I said, I didn't think that there was one scripture that could save you. Yes, there is. And that's a doer of the word. Be a doer of the word. Faith produces obedience. By our obedience, we walk on the way step by step. God is oh, so faith. Are you telling me that if I am not obedient, my faith is no good? I mean, it is kind of weird that disobedience is unbelief. And we're talking about obedience and faith, but faithlessness is a disobedient person. So faith produces obedience. By our obedience, we walk, okay. God has given the Holy Spirit to those who obey him. Only this, only by this spirit do we receive light and power to walk on the way of life. You mean to actually live a righteous life? I mean, to deny all ungodliness and worldly lust? Is that what your Bible's telling us, God? I know it. We cannot make any progress at all on the way of life just by relying on Christ's substitutional obedience. However, having his obedience, I don't know what that means, but I... I, it doesn't make no difference. 
However, having his obedience as the foundation, origin, and source, it is absolutely vital that we exercise personal obedience as written so plainly and unmistakably in Hebrews 5.9. We cannot take a single step on the way of life without personal obedience. Apostleship for obedience to faith. What did Paul receive grace and apostleship to bring about? Romans 1.5. Obedience to faith among all nations for his name. So souls are to be led to obedience, not just to believe in Christ's obedience and rejoice, rejoice over it. It is precisely through the personal obedience that we, in spirit and in truth, take each step of the way of life. There we go. <laughs> we begin on the way of obedience on the day we are converted. Yeah, okay. Sounds good. Sounds good to me. I mean, when we call on his name, believe in Jesus, but that does not mean you're adding something to your, that what Christ has done. I'm telling you, that is not, that, that people cannot use that type of, 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 of phrasing out here to try to make it sound like that we're adding to. This is what the Bible's speaking. We begin on the way of obedience on the day we are converted. When we call on his name, believe in Jesus, confess our sins, because this is the first thing the gospel commands us to do. From then on, it is important that we continue as we have begun, being obedient at every point. The message of the gospel is crystal clear and easy to understand that even on occasion, one can think otherwise. If anything should be unclear for us, then we need to seek the reason in ourselves. But I'm going to tell you right now, you still have to repent because how is a person going to understand from, from, from turning the way, I mean, from walking the darkness and the broad path to taking the, the narrow path and the light and whatever, the spirit and all this, it, it still has to come to an understanding. It could... Like I said, I don't think there's anything wrong with admitting you're a sinner in need of a savior if there's good intent. I don't I don't see it at all. Who could ask for a clearer example than Matthew 28, 20? Let's see what it says. Teach them to observe all things that I have commanded to you. And lo, I am always I I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Teaching them to observe all things, okay, to obey every single word. That's what it that's what it says. That's what somebody added behind that. Think for example the Sermon on the Mount. There is plenty to do when you have finished reading this. No danger of being out of work here. This requires faith and love. This requires prayer. This requires spirit and power. All that we might need in order to be obedient is given to us. That's what I've seen here and said about salvation. Everything that's why there's nothing you can do to save yourself. But I'm telling you, you still have to be obedient. Yes, you do. You still have to repent. Yes, you do. All that we may need in order to be obedient is given to us. In and through Jesus Christ and is available for us both day and night. God be pleased, praised. Obedience leads to works. Well, the other day I was reading someone is it was saying that obedience was what you get from faith is as if it was the works. Obedience leads the works. See, that's what I don't understand. It depends on how you look at it, how somebody who could ask for any clearer or more straightforward, straightforward than James bless words concerning obedience. They are crystal crystal clear. What does it profit, my brethren, if, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can faith save him? Thus also by faith itself, if it does not have works, obedience. See, there we go. Obe it's dead. It's dead. Even the demons believe. But do you not? But do you want to know, O oh foolish man, that faith without works is useless? For as if the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is also dead. Okay. Surely nobody has the slightest doubt 
about what this means. Without obedience, it is useless, absolutely useless. What, you mean salvation? Sounds like to me. I mean, I, I could, it may not say salvation here, but I'm thinking it's absolutely useless. You can think what you want, say what you want, and believe what you want. Obedience is what counts. No salvation without it. No further progress without a deeper obedience. Not a single step further on the way of life without obedience. Hallelujah there. God gives grace, but for what purpose? Precisely for the reason, one reason, obedience. Titus, Titus, Titus. If we imagine anything else, then we are only deceiving ourselves and will come to regret it bitterly one day. Irrespective of what you say or do, irrespective of what stage you are at, know this. The only thing that counts is obedience to the faith. Everything that is needed in order to be obedient can be found and obtained in Jesus Christ. So we are without excuse. Let us therefore do our utmost to be obedient in everything. Let's see what that scripture says. Casting down arguments and, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience with your obedience it, something with fulfilled. For do this, I also wrote that I might put you to test whether you are obedient in all things. If anybody recognized, if you asked me, I wouldn't have thought that there was a scripture. It was scripture. Now, what made me think about all this the other day about faith and obedience and belief and obedience? What made me think that? John 16, 9. I was like, this doesn't sound like believe or I hear it means simply believing. Let's go to verse 8 because you're going to have to read verse 8. I'm still going to read from the ESV and then go to the King James. And when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Concerning sin, because they do not believe in me. So why is simply believing there have anything to do with concerning sin? It's not the right message. Didn't make no difference whether you read the ESV or King James. You could be a King James nut and it ain't going to make a difference. And when he comes and... <laughs> And when he has come, when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and righteousness and of judgment. Of sin, because they believe not in me. On me. On me. On me. See? Let's see what this means. What it see what the study um. okay I read this the other day of sin because they believe not on me this should not be interpreted as it is very quick frequently is of sin of unbelief but of sin genuinely generally unbelief in Christ is stated as the cause of sin but that's because of disobedience Sin is missing the aim of life, the disordered action of the powers that have lost their controlling principle. Christ is the revelation to the, father, the world of the Father's love and union with God through him. The soul finds the center of his being and the true purpose of its life by the witness of Christ. The Holy Spirit convinces men that he is the center of the moral of harmony of the universe. And through and that through him, their spirits have access to God. This conviction, I've even sit here and said, that's the proof that everybody needs to sit here and talk about of the proof of God. If anybody can ever remember of being convicted, I know everybody's been out here and has gotten convicted. 
Even atheists have been convicted by God, but most people don't remember what it felt like, the feeling of conviction. It could be one, it could be two seconds. It could be three seconds. And I felt it for five or six hours long when I got baptized by the Holy Spirit. This conviction refill. This conviction re reveals to them their sin because they believe not on him. Their sin because they do not believe, they believe not on him. What does that sound like that even in this scripture, it has anything to do with simply believing? In effect, it's solit solitary or according, uh, I don't know. That's the only reason why I ever looked that up the other day, because I knew that there was something about that scripture. Well, I don't know what to say. All I know is that people need to repent and turn from their wicked ways. I, I can give you a video that you can watch that Billy Graham made, and it's a really good video. And if anybody out there believes that Billy Graham preached that you can pray a prayer and be saved, well, then find out for yourself that he never really preached it. Even in this video right here today that I watched that Billy Graham made, um, he even admitted that there's no easy way about it, that there's going to show that you're going to have to prove a show of conversion, that there's no way you can pray a prayer and be saved. You don't believe me? This is the video that you can watch and hear. Okay. Um, Billy Graham, the cost of not following Jesus. That's the name of the video. Billy Graham, the cost of not following Jesus, San Diego, California. The person that uploaded the video is our only hope. Watch the video. It's actually a great video. I mean, it's a great video. I'm telling you, I eat. He talked about it in a video one day about praying a prayer, and he never went into detail. He never said that you could just pray a simple prayer and live the life that you want. He talks about in I've, I've, I don't know how many vid videos that I've witnessed Billy Graham make that even talked about that there could be Christians even in the crowd that are not born again. He doesn't say it the way I just got done saying it. If that would piss a lot of people off with what I just got done saying. I don't know what to say. People get the wrong message. He's even admitted there there have been pastors that have walked up to him and and you know, he never saved no one. Jesus Christ saves everyone. No one's ever been saved by a man or any denomination. Well, I don't think I've ruined this video yet. I may want to end the video as soon as possible. Or I'll say something and end up ruining it before it's all said and done. I'm not against wretched. I'm not against the video I made earlier today. I, I think I can't. I, I think I got to upload the video I made earlier this morning. I mean, I really think it was a good video. I think this is a good video. I know I read stuff that people put up on on the Internet, but it makes perfect sense. I didn't hear nothing wrong about the obedience and faith message. I heard nothing wrong about it. Now to hear somebody say that uh, past, present, future, bells going off, fraud, bells going off, fraud alert, bells going off, fraud alert. No. I said, and, and here, I'll end the video on this. I've said that the only way that that could ever work, past, present, future,
So if you think I'm going to ruin the video, I'm going to ruin it at the end of the video. If you think that past, present, and future could be, that could be the case. Just like when somebody says that repentance is, is unbelief to belief, the only way it's from unbelief to belief is from disobedience to obedience. But that's not what it is. Just like what did I what was I talking about before that? Sometimes this comes back. What was I gonna run the video about? Oh, past, present, future? No. It just doesn't work. Anytime anybody believes that, you can lead them astray to going back and living the life. So many people were on fire that gave their life to Christ, picked up the Bible and turned from sin and went back to sin. That that's that, that doesn't work. I mean, I'm not the only one that's ever made that comment. I made the comment. I already knew people were on fire, that so many people had given their life to Christ, picked up the Bible, quit hanging around, quit doing the drinking and the drugs. Do you think that that, do you think that, that sounds like a, a born again person? Well, what happened when they went back out doing the things that they were doing before? You're going to say that that person was never saved? Prove it. Prove it. You can't prove it. I've already seen it in people. And I'm not trying to be mean. I don't know what to say about it. They've admitted this themselves. Plenty of people that they got the wrong message. Well, let me see. Should I ever make a video like this ever again? Is there any way I could ever keep from ever making a video like this ever again? I don't think there is. I mean, oh, I mean, I know times times wasting away right now. I don't think people realize, you know, everybody wants to talk about how quick the rapture could be here. I don't think people realize how quick that, that, that it's going to hit the fan real soon. I'm going to tell you that right now. This is not a joking matter. So if anybody's ever going to say anything to anybody, if I could ever get the nerve to actually say something to somebody and say it the right way, it isn't all talking about, I'm telling you right now, I know we don't seek God. I really, I really wish And, and I did hear somebody say this, but I, man, something wrong. There's something about the sin nature of people, man. I'm not joking. Most of my life, I would have never even sit here and talked about God with absolutely zilch. No one out here. No one at all. If you think I'm lying, he Go ask all my friends. Should I make a video going video in my friends that I've never sit here and talked about God with ever in my entire life? I've been able to sit and talk with these people for hours at a time. You may think I'm the biggest, the, the biggest pain in the rear end that you've ever witnessed. The, the most condemning sounding person. No, that everybody's condemning themselves. Again, you have the right to talk about how society is. If somebody fits that, that ain't judging someone. There's been times I've brought people's names. I hope I never do it again. I'm not joking. People want to believe in the lies and the garbage? 
Okay. And I'm sure at the end of the day, everybody would love to have just heard a message of me talking about Christ did it all at the cross. The easy believism. This is what a lot of people out here would have loved to have heard. You don't have to worry about anything. Just can't do it, man. Can't do it. Can't do it. You repent did not add to the message of you saving yourself as if Christ didn't do so. I mean, it's not how it's supposed to be. It doesn't make a difference if that's how people look at it. That's not how it's supposed to be. People were never supposed to look at it that way. That because I allowed God to change me that I'm trying to save myself. <laughs> oh my goodness. Please don't feel like you got slapped in the face, world. Please don't feel like you got slapped in the face. Well, either way, at the end of the day, God is great. 